Focus on form refers to bringing grammar to the attention of language learners as part of communicative language practice. Some argued that language learning is a fairly autonomous process that occurs spontaneously if instruction provides plentiful opportunities to deal with the target language. Others have claimed that effective second language instruction involves explicitly teaching the rules of the target language. Focus and form has two main features. First, focus on the rules is less important than focus on the meaning. That is, the emphasis is on the meaning of the language, which is primary, and a shift towards a focus on formal aspects occurs only when meaning is not accurately conveyed or when the instructor suspects that shift is necessary for comprehension. Second is that this shift entails attention being directed towards the grammatical features of the language. As a summary focus on form requires the students to focus on the grammatical correctness or incorrectness of the second language. There are three possible ways that contribute to the development of communicative ability through focus and form. Research into the focus and form type of ESL grammar instruction suggests that direct ESL grammar instruction may help raise learners' consciousness of a form which they have not noticed when they have read or heard it so that learners may learn to recognize the feature and listen for it in the future. A second purpose for grammatical knowledge is that it may serve as a memory device, helping ESL learners remember how to produce a particular form until they can produce it automatically. And the third, ESL grammar instruction can be a means of flooding learners with examples of a form which occurs infrequently. The third is that ESL grammar instruction can be a means of flooding learners with examples of a form which occurs infrequently, giving them more intensive practice with a form that they might not encounter in everyday speech. Yet, there are still problems with form-focused activities. FFA or form-focused activities will be useful when the learner is ready to acquire the matter in question, that is, teachability hypothesis, proposed by Pineman in 1985. And learners might feel anxious when they are corrected after failing, there is a certain anxiety that is felt by the learners where the effective filter heightens during the time of correction. It is more on the effective filter hypothesis proposed by Krashen, which affects how a learner learns a language. Considering these shortcomings, two activities were proposed. First is the interpretation task which enables the learners to understand the meaning of a certain structure. And the second one is called the conscious raising task, which gives some forms of second language to the learners and the learners need to perform on them. Focus on form can be achieved through the teacher's role in guiding from behind to focus meaning relationships as the task progress following the frame of meaning, form, meaning progression for task design. Focus and form is frequently teacher initiated, but it is also initiated by the learners through questions and requests for explanation. It is suggested that focus and form should not be initiated with beginning learners. Instead, learners should be encouraged to attend to form only after they have acquired basic structures and vocabulary and have developed a basic ability to communicate. Instructional activities for focus and form include implicit techniques such as input flood, input enhancement, and structure-based tasks. Explicit techniques include consciousness-raising strategies, 
focused communication task, error correction strategies, and the garden path technique. It is also suggested that instead of creating grammar correction exercises using decontextualized sentences from learners' writings, teachers should create short texts that include common types of errors made by the students in their writings. Students can work together to edit more authentic texts, which helps them to correct their own work. Larson Freeman suggests focus on form activities and techniques as follows. First is collaborative dialogues. These are conversations in which students work together to discuss and use a new form, constructing a sentence together. Next is prolepsis. It is an instructional conversation that takes place between the teacher and the student and the teacher coaches the student throughout the process of the task. And the last one is the language experience approach. It is a technique in which the learners dictate to the instructor in English something that they would like to be able to say. The instructor then writes the student's message in correct grammatical English and gives them to the students. In totality, to be able to speak in a second language, you should not just know a long list of vocabulary or grammatical structures as what is taught in students in colleges and universities. To be able to communicate in a second language, in our case, English in particular, one must know the grammatical rules in a meaningful way.